You know, 90% of my time is spent thinking about how I can fit the Gravity Pro into another video, but with the help of your comments, I've figured it out. Let's compare it to the Speed Pro. Direct comparisons are quietly becoming my new favorite style of video because they allow me to dive deep into the nuance of what makes two rackets that might look very similar play very differently than what the specs might suggest. Let me know in the comments what you think of these comparison videos, how I can improve them, and maybe a couple of rackets that you'd like me to compare in the future. I've already got a list in my head of rackets I'm going to be comparing soon, but it's always nice to add to it. Also, as usual, please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and remember that you can check out either of these two rackets on our website, racketsandrunners.ca, if you like what you hear about them today. But anyways, back to the rackets. The Speed Pro and Gravity Pro are both 18 by 20, 100 square inch frames, so compared to to the rest of the industry, they're kind of in their own little unique spec corner. It is pretty easy to think they are similar frames. And to a certain extent, they are. It's not like they play drastically different, like a Prestige versus a Pure Arrow, for example. There are a lot of playability overlaps here, and they are kind of geared towards a similar style of player. They're made for someone who prioritizes stability, consistency, and control, but they do achieve that in distinct ways, and that's what I'm going to be trying to explain today. Now, I've spent a lot of time on court with both these rackets over the last several months. Maybe the Gravity Pro not quite so much because it just came out, but I am very familiar with how they play. But even then, I wanted to test them side by side with as many controlled variables as possible, so I strung them both up with Head Lynx Tour at 51 pounds, and I took them out for one last play test. I can confidently say I finally got all my ducks in a row, and I'm ready for this comparison. Let's get into it. I like starting off with feel because it's such an important playability characteristic and it plays a huge role in determining a racket's control profile and between these two it's probably the most instantly noticeable playability difference. The reason there is such a big difference in feel between these two rackets is because there's a big difference in beam thickness and overall shape. The gravity is paper thin at 20 millimeters and has a classic design and the speed is much thicker at 23 millimeters and has a much more modern shape to it. It has an aerodynamically optimized throat here, not as crazy as what you're gonna get from the extremer aero lines, but still more than the gravity, and that thicker beam has a massive effect on feel. It is a much, much more modern feeling racket. It is soft like the Gravity, they both flex at 58 and 59 RA strung, but it has a much more mushy and sticky response. What do I mean by sticky though? Because that's not a term that I've heard used ever pretty much, I think I just made it up. But basically when the ball sinks into the string bed, instead of flexing the racket uniformly, it kind of pockets in there, goes very deep, but it's kind of ambiguous as to what it's doing in the string bed. The ball's entry and exit points are less well-defined, so you can get a little bit lost as to where it is in the string bed, how long it's going to spend in there, and where it's going to go when it actually releases from the racket. It's just a much less precise flex than what you have on the gravity. This is a sensation that I've felt with softer, thicker, more modernly shaped rackets. Yes, I am looking at you, Wilson Clash, but don't get me wrong, the speed isn't anywhere near as bad as the Clash in that regard. Because the gravity has such a thin beam and traditional shape, and mold, it's entirely classic in the way that it flexes. The beam flexes uniformly all the way down the racket pretty much into your hand, so you have a much better feel for how long the ball is going to spend in there and where it's going to go when it shoots out. It also has a much smaller sweet spot than the one on the speed, so you won't have that same issue of getting lost in the string bed. Now I know I've just tried to take on the impossible by describing feel in as much detail as possible. Demoing is really the only way to get a full understanding of it, but for those of you that are still a little bit confused, let me just boil it down to this. The gravity just feels better than the speed. It provides a better connection to the ball and that has an important effect on the two rackets control profiles. Like I said earlier, both rackets are control rackets before all else, and they're both really, really good control rackets. They've both got 18 by 20 string patterns, which is super important if you're trying to optimize control because it really does provide a super solid feel, and it also makes for a lower and more consistent launch angle. With that said though, the Gravity Pro is just a better pure control racket than the Speed. The all-time great feel you have here just makes it so you have ultimate connection over where you're going to place the ball, especially when you're dialed in. Also, that smaller sweet spot just makes the racket it more precise. It's weird to call a 100 square inch frame a scalpel, but the Gravity Pro really is one of those ultra precision instruments that hits with total deadly accuracy. Then you've got the lower launch angle, which makes it more solid on contact so you can take a harder swing at the ball without worrying that it's going to fly, especially on flatter directional shots. Look, I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again. The Gravity Pro really is the creme de la creme in terms of the best control rackets. Okay, Luca, we get it. You really like the Gravity Pro. Now you gotta calm down a little bit. Because the Speed Pro has a higher 
launch and bigger sweet spot, it's more forgiving and easier to use, but it's not going to be nearly as precise. I really do hate saying this about the speed because I think it stacks up as a great control racket compared to the rest of the industry, but compared to the gravity, it just isn't as good. It's like comparing a great $50 bottle of wine to an aged legendary vintage Bordeaux. It's excellent, but not as good as the best. It's also got a bit more of a wild side, maybe the most of any current 1820 actually, but what it suffers in control, it makes up for in power. I know I just spent a lot of time talking about feel and control, and that's because I think it's so darn important to understand the difference between these two rackets, but let's move on to power. The speed is significantly more powerful than the gravity, and that's to be expected from a thicker beam and modern shape like this, which just makes for a sturdier racket that packs more mass behind the ball. The difference in shot depth is massive, but I also think that the speed just has a touch more top end pace generating potential. It's actually quite rare for an 1820 to have this much potential to launch the ball. Usually with this dense of a string pattern, you have to work really hard for any pace or depth. It's almost like the speed is a hybrid power and control frame, whereas the gravity is very much a control control racket, and that's pretty much all due to the speed shape. It's not that the gravity can't hit with power, it actually packs a pretty decent punch for a racket with this much control, but it's still nowhere near the speed. You do have to hit with a fast full stroke to get power with the Gravity Pro, but because it's such a confidence inducing frame, you'll really feel like you can go for your shots. Also, you won't be limited in the amount of power you can get, it's got the sweet spot and swing weight to hit hard, you just have to do most of the work yourself. So right off the bat, both these rackets are incredibly stable. If you've played with either, you probably know that already, but they do kind of have different styles of stability. To me, nowadays, you've got two different styles of stability, classic stability and modern stability. Classic stability is pretty straightforward. It's just a lot of weight behind the ball and a consistent response. The gravity, because it does have such a consistent and low launching string bed and a hefty static and swing weight, has that classic stability. Modern stability is a little bit different and a little bit more complicated. It's often related to power because powerful rackets have bigger sweet spots and having a bigger sweet spot is good for stability because it means that you've got more room to hit on the frame before the frame starts to flutter. There are of course diminishing returns here, which is why something like a TIS-6 will never be described as stable, but it's also why modern day tweeners like the Pure Drive or Arrow have become so viable even with the pros. They still have a solid and stable response with the benefits of a lighter weight. Because the speed is lighter and has a bigger sweet spot compared to the gravity, it has elements of that modern stability, but still a lot of classic stability as well. I really can't say which one is more stable between the two. The gravity doesn't have that modern stability element, but because it's so consistent, I have to call it a draw. Honestly, these might be the two most stable rackets on the market right now, at least in stock form. If you do want to stabilize a racket that isn't stable enough in stock form, check out our customization video that should be popping up on screen right about now. So I am very excited to talk about spin, but before I get into it, I have to talk about swing pattern because it is very important for their respective spin profiles. Swing pattern is how the racket flies through the air, by the way. These are actually two pretty slow rackets. They're heavy 100s with high swing weight, so they were never going to be fast, but after months of playing with them, I'm still not quite sure which one is technically quicker. Now that's weird to me because the speed is the speed, it's right there in the name, but I still can't tell you with 100% confidence that it's quicker than the gravity. Here's why I'm confused. Thin beam versus thick beam or arrow throat versus standard throat. Thin beams are faster and arrow throats are faster, but they're on opposite rackets, so which one is more important? Well, here's the thing. For any movement that isn't a ground stroke, the gravity's thin beam trumps any of the speed's faster design characteristics, so it's a quicker overall racket around the court, which is really ironic. But then for ground strokes, it's a little more complicated and kind of comes down to which racket matches better with your swing style. If you have a more classic perpendicular to the ground contact point, the gravity's thin beam will feel faster. If you have a more modern parallel to the ground contact point, the arrow throat on the speed will be faster. The different head shapes are also very important. The more round and teardrop shape on the gravity is just a little slower to bring through contact than the oval and long shape on the speed. So if you like snapping your wrist during ground strokes, the speed is going to be just a little bit faster. Wait, snapping your wrist, I don't mean like breaking your wrist. I mean like wrist lag and then snapping it through like that. I hope you get that. How does this affect spin though? Well, that's because spin is determined by a number of different factors, one of which is swing speed, and because the speed complements the modern style, which we all know is more spin friendly, 
it's a more spin friendly racket. But that's not the only reason the speed is more spin friendly. Let's look at the other factors that determine spin potential. String bed density, string movement, and mass behind the ball. And with all three of those, the speed is clearly ahead. Yes, they are both 1820s, but the speed string bed is more open, so there's more spin potential from space between the strings. Then the thicker beam makes up for the slightly lower swing weight in terms of mass behind the ball. Finally, it's hard to show on camera, but the speed's grommets are significantly more open than the gravities, which just means the string has a little bit more space to move around and snap back. Again, like it was with power, it's not like the gravity can't hit with spin. In fact, compared to other 1820s, because it has a 100 square inch head size, the string bed is a little bit more open, so it's pretty good, but not as good as the speed. So you can probably tell by the quite frankly ridiculous amount of detail that I just went into about both these rackets that I'm a really big fan and I really don't think that any advanced player can go wrong with them because there are so few downsides. Obviously this is a direct comparison so I've had to do a little bit of qualifying between which is better than the other in terms of playability characteristics but the reality is these are two rackets that perform exceedingly well in nearly every aspect. Like I said earlier you're looking at the Speed or Gravity Pro if you want a consistent stable and controlled racket that isn't as demanding as the ones with smaller head sizes. If that sounds like something for you but you don't want to sacrifice too much spin or power, go for the speed. If you want a more classic experience, go for the gravity. I would really only avoid these rackets if you like the feeling of light whippy frames. They are a little bit more on the sluggish side but once you get them moving it's curtains for your opponent. I'm so glad I finally got to do my long awaited comparison between these two rackets. It was a pleasure diving down the speed versus gravity rabbit hole and I know a lot of you were waiting for this review so I hope you liked it. Remember to drop us a like if you did, and please feel free to stop by the store to demo either or both of these rackets, or you can check them out at racketsandrunners.ca.